WIS presents New Orleans Parades from the Past. I'm Peggy Scott Laborde. This carnival season is unlike any other in recent history. And even with the changes, Mardi Gras history, though, is still one of our favorite topics here at WIS. This year, while the coronavirus pandemic will keep crews off the streets, we're bringing some of their parades to you. Over the next hour, we'll revisit New Orleans parades from the past with rare home movies and archival footage of some of the city's most historic and best known crews. We'll watch them together and we'll share their history and some expert commentary. Providing that commentary are two carnival historians, Errol Laborde, author of four books on Mardi Gras and executive editor of New Orleans Magazine. And, hello, E. Hey. And we have Arthur Hardy. Since 1977, the publisher of Arthur Hardy's Mardi Gras Guide and author of Mardi Gras in New Orleans, an illustrated history. Hello, Arthur. Happy hey. to be here with you, Peg. Same here. And we are in the Corman Studios of WYS, and we're going to look at some wonderful, very, very rare footage. And first up, Rex, 1923. Let's take a look. And here we have these wonderful images. The theme was Fantasy of the Sea. And these are Ford educational films. The Ford Motor Company was trying to encourage people to go around, of course, the country using their motor cars. And the theme, as we said, is Fantasy of the Sea. And you'll notice, look at the band. Papa Jack Lane, who was a pioneer of jazz, he was the one who used to assemble many of these groups together. Don't yes? you wish we had sound? I would love to know what they're playing. <laughs> and, and notice, too, we don't have float tractor signs, but we have individuals, marchers, carrying the signs with each float title, which is kind of neat. And this is Lee Circle. We should point that out, too. Yeah, I guess the reason that Ford was encouraging people to be mechanized is that you don't have to use mules anymore. <laughs> that they, uh, they have mules in there. <laughs> but you also notice in the, in the background, uh, in several of these streetcars, this is a surprise because there's big crowds over there. And today for Mardi Gras, even for a smaller parade, you don't see streetcars running. And, and I realize one reason is, is that a lot of those people, the only way they got to the parade was by streetcar because they didn't have the automobiles and so they were really playing a functional role. That's a very good point. And next up though, we're going to move to Rex 1926, right on St. Charles Avenue. Can you believe that? And look at that, uh, the police, there are the police. And this is from the view of the Daleman House, the Cock House, which was a famous stopping point at 2525 St. Charles Avenue. Sadly, the house burned a few years ago. But look at it coming down the street. The music of the bells was the theme. And some people are already boogieing. <laughs> <laughs> An early second line. And Absolutely. This, and this was one of the places until, until the fire that was always a stop on the Rex route. And Rex, in the recent years, had actually crossed over St. Charles to get to the house, and then it crossed back over. And it, it went back to Mr. Dalman, who was a, a past Rex, and so for a long time, that, that was part of the ceremony of, of Rex. And Rex was Joseph Hennigan, who uh, also was a relative of, uh, what, Peggy Wilson? He was the grandfather, if you, all, if you all remember, a former council member, uh, Peggy Wilson, who still has her, her grandfather. grandfather's boots when he was Rex and wears wow. them sometimes during the winter. So <laughs> and, what a cool thing to have. Yes, and we also had a page on that Rex float uh, who was Dr. Homer Dupuy, right? Yeah, this is one of the, the really great stories. Homer Dupuy wasn't a doctor yet. He was a little kid. And he had a longtime ambition to be a page in the Rex ball or, or in the Rex parade. And so much so that he even went to church and he made a novena, <laughs> it, praying that he could be uh, a page. Well, it didn't work out. And so the announcement came out, uh, some, a guy named Hugh McCloskey, which was a friend, was one of the pages, but uh, Homer Dupuy couldn't be for some reason. That morning, he gets a call that the guy who was going to be a page was sick, and they asked uh, Homer if he could do it. So quickly, they sent a limousine and all the appropriate vehicles, and they put him in costume, and he was a page that day. So he got to be a page, which was just a big dream for him. Some carnival and, divine and, intervention. And of course, he did the ball. Well, he became a real Rex loyalist, <laughs> and many years later was actually Rex. And even in the rest of the years that he was, he was very much a part of Rex, and a, a spokesman for Rex. That was a big, a big day. Yeah, you and know, they're throwing. Are yeah, they throwing? notice how many people are throwing in these parades. Uh, Henri Schindler tells us 1921 is the first year that Rex kind of institutionalized the custom of every member throwing. And uh, you can really see that. Here we see some 
predecessors of the organized truck parades. Uh, Elk started out in 1933, but in this parade, now we're seeing masks because you, you saw some float riders just who kind of jumped in behind wrecks. I mean, I'm sure they didn't have a permit, but who cared, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and moving on, though, to 1939, Rex 1939, and that is, of course, right there by Gallier Hall, Belgian fairy tales, a rather um, unusual theme <laughs> there. And this was the, from the historic New Orleans collection. We thank our friends there. But um, this is during the Depression. So this is a pretty fancy parade for it, the Depression. It really it? is. And notice, too, we're all familiar with Canal Street having the uh, electrical light poles decorated, but St. Charles Avenue did that too, which I didn't realize back in the 30s uh, we had gone that far in, in kind of decorating the thoroughfares. Well, r rather ominous note, this would have been in February of 1939. Look at all the fun that people are having, not knowing, or maybe some were kind of sensing it, that in September of 1939, and essentially World War II would start. Uh, that's when, uh, well, when, the, when Germany uh, invaded Poland. Then the following year, Belgium was invaded in May of 1940, and so Belgium, which is being saluted in this parade, was about to go into hard times, which we do for a long time. The fairy tales theme, by the way, uh, fairy tales are very popular in the Nordic countries, uh, like Belgium and Denmark. Mm -hmm. It was a form of storytelling that was, that was very popular, and so it, it is consistent with, with Belgium as it is with, with Denmark. People like Hans Christian Andersen, for example, mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, from Denmark. Yeah, and look at that, the alligator, an early alligator there. And look at the crowds on what would be the Lafayette Square side of, of Gary Hall. They're, they're quite, quite large. Mm -hmm. And what, what are they throwing? Are they throwing beads from Czechoslovakia uh, yet? Not, or maybe? not, not yet. that early, just, not just early. baubles, just little toys and trinkets and things. But I'm just amazed at how much they were throwing. And you don't see too many of the riders really tied down, do you? They, no, you don't. They're kind of you just don't. standing there. She whiz. And there's only a few riders for floats. Oh, too. sure. And yeah. Look at I mean, that pan I mean the, the economics was uh -huh. was totally different. The floats were smaller, and, and in the years to come, uh, mm -hmm. the captains would figure out how to expand yeah. all this. Here's one of those crews we're talking about on right. flat bag trucks. And notice no walls on the trucks. You couldn't get away with that <laughs> uh, this time. One of those crews was the Bourbon Street Bounders, and then later the Royal Street Rounders. <laughs> And we're about to actually move over to Zulu, 1939. Look at this, though. Look at those early, yeah, the early trucks here. Love that. Oh, that's a sorority. Oh, how wonderful. And now and we, here we are at Zulu. Zulu. And Zulu, of course, would arrive via the royal, their own royal barge. It was actually a tugboat that was barred from Janky and Company on the New Basin Canal uh, right. right there at Durbany and um, New Basin right there in Claiborne. But look at Zulu. King and Zulu was Alan James, and, um, and the Queen was Odette DeLille. What and if you're wondering where the new Basin Canal was, look at the Pontchartrain Expressway. Yes. Because the Pontchartrain <laughs> Expressway was built on the route of the new Basin Canal, and the arrival point was would, would be uh, Durbany and Claiborne. And so, um, yeah, Zulu would arrive on, on a barge there and then, and then go into town. These are home movies, by the way, from Charles Lewis Woundy, which at the Historic New Orleans con uh, collection is now the caretaker of these great, I, great movies. Peg, I think it's the earliest Zulu footage I've ever seen, certainly, but I'm not seeing any coconuts. Very uh, that's good not point. Not to say they weren't throwing them or tossing them, but uh, we don't see any in this film, at least. But really historic Also, footage. not too many people dressed. Oh, look, there's, uh, that is what, the Choctaw, Choctaw Club? Choctaw Club, yep. Hey, what, now, the the Choctaw that. Club was, uh, that, that was back in the days of the, oh, uh -huh. the, day the political machines and the Democratic, there was an organization, the, uh, the Orleans Parish Democratic Association. And this club was, they call it the Choctaw Club, kind of in line of Tammany Hall uh, in, in New York City. That you had a lot of people that had these clubs that were associated with a democratic political organization. And for some reason, a lot of them had Indian themes to them. Yeah, it was at St. Charles and Porges, right. and yep. of course the building is long gone. And then the Choctaw Parading Organization really came out of that club. So oh, really? On the West Not Bank. Not that. Yes. Oh, gee. That, that was an organization on the West Bank. Right. And, uh, yeah, they come out on a Saturday morning. And and it was pretty much a, a boat parade. Yes, and now we're moving into color. 1941 by Gallier Hall here. And look at this. The, uh, Rex 1941 was Charles Fenner. And the theme was gems from the Arabian Nights. And, of course, the Fenner family had long been involved and continue to be involved with Rex. And uh, he actually founded Fenner & Bean, a brokerage firm which became Merrill Lynch, Pierce, Fenner & Smith. Yeah, we're going to hear more about the Fenner family, which is very important in the, in the, uh, in the future to follow. But, yeah, you're seeing a little bit more costuming uh, by this time. 
And, you know, we should point out that after this, this is the last parade before the war. And, uh, and so, yeah, from 42 to 45, absolutely no parades. Of course, no one knew then when they were seeing this parade. They didn't know that. That's we right. Would be gone for a few years. Yeah. So Lafayette Hotel in the in the background. Yes, a perfect vantage point here too. And I love seeing this in color. Just so dramatic. Uh, once again, love to know. I guess that, as you said, uh, throwing little baubles. Yep. Here. I think this is the earliest uh, color footage we have. Yeah, and now we're going to move over to another Rex uh, in just a moment. Rex 1952, and look at that. Here we are. And, uh, wow. And notice the float. The pages are on either side of the float. Later on, they're actually able to walk across because they're on the same uh, And this is William. Platform. That's a very good point. And this is yeah. William Waller Young. And uh, somewhere in that crowd would be Chap Morrison, of course, being uh, toasting. Yep. And panorama through the magic sugar egg was the theme. What a theme. <laughs> and this Rex's son was king in 1987, yeah. William Waller Young wow. uh, Jr. And, and one of the um, pages was Herbert, J young Herbert Janky wow. Jr. Royal who, artist. Of course, eventually <laughs> would be one of the premier flow builders, we should point out. And no more mules at this point, huh? They'd ended, what, in 49? Well, is that right? Well, actually, 50 and 51, 50? they okay. transitioned. The last one was in oh. 51. Um, I missed the mules, but there were a lot of problems with them, of <laughs> course. <laughs> I am sure you, there were. You know, you mentioned Herbert Janke, who started a float building company called Royal Artists. And last year, Royal Artists <laughs> got the Rex contract to start building the Rex Parade Correct. Uh, after having been um, by Blaine Kern for many yeah. years. And there's Jill Jackson, the WWL announcer, and she became nationally known as an entertainment reporter, and she's interviewing one of the Rex lieutenants yep. there. And remember, she used to write for Writer's Digest. Yes, and she was syndicated. Uh, which was that wonderful Nopsy uh, pamphlet that you get on the yeah. buses. Yeah, kind of like a Hollywood <laughs> gossip column. Yeah. She was syndicated nationwide. <laughs> I wanted to mention, when we saw the Rex Kings float, that was the beginning of the new look for the king's float with that big crown on top. And that's become a fixture. Uh, the, the float has been modified through the years, but that crown is still a, a, a part of the Rex uh, uh, king float. And look at Gallier Hall, too. Yep. That is just amazing, um, the throngs. Not a whole lot of people in costume, though, that you can see on the street. Not everybody was in costume. Quite a few military bands in this parade. And you notice, too, the people at Gallier Hall are, are dressed up. Uh, unlike today, sadly, when I see people in blue jeans and cutoffs at Gallagher Hall, it ought to be a dress code, in my opinion. I love that arch, that Isn't lit that cool? arch. And yeah. at night, it's even neater. <laughs> <laughs> That's so wonderful. And just in seeing the color, and, and um, so many of the bands, which adds so much to the parades, oh, right, Arthur? Indeed. I know that's been very much a part of your life. Yeah, there's some high school bands in this parade, too. I wish we could identify them. Mm -hmm. And back then, as is now, Rex, which is true of all the good parades, very faithful to the rules. Everybody's wearing a mask. Oh, you see classical <coughs> float riders' masks. Uh, you see some of the, uh, the classic uh, the top pieces and crowns that they're wearing. And of course, they, they're sticking to a theme. Floats are a lot smaller, but that is the look that you see in a parade today, only today it's expanded. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and uh, we are next going to go come up to Zulu the same year. So we're so fortunate. Yeah. Here we are. Look at the, the beginning cars. of the Zulu parade. <laughs> yes, yeah. and I believe this is along Rampart Street. This mm -hmm. would be along South Rampart Street. King Zulu, from 1952, was William Boykins. Yep. Who was king twice again, Peggy? Ah. And that's not unusual. So they've had a couple of kings who've. who've uh, and the Queen Bernice, the Bernice Taylor. Yep. There she is being interviewed. And oh, that's Okie Doki, who was the WBOK uh, radio announcer. Yeah, yeah. And the legend has it that one of Okie Doki's catchphrases was Laudy Miss Claudy, heard by a young man named Lloyd Price, who worked at the radio station and turned it into a hit song. And Lloyd Price lived in Kenya. He was from Kenya. Okie Doki was like the big name in black radio at the time. Uh -huh. That wasn't his birth name, of course, okay. But he went by Okie Doki, <laughs> and he was, really, uh, he was really a very, very popular figure. And, you know, some of these parades, the, uh, the Zulu parades would have a very circuitous route, and they could last, like, from seven hours because they'd go pretty much into neighborhoods. Yep. Also, just the look at the size, I guess sort of the size of maybe a crew de vue float these yeah. days made of uh, with aluminum foil. And they had a published route. It was in the newspaper. They didn't always follow it. Uh -huh. But uh, at that time, they weren't going on Canal Street. It was in, in the African-American neighborhoods. But tremendous crowds and 
oddly, predominantly white crowds. Everybody wanted to see Zulu. Absolutely. And moving on to 1953 with Mardi Gras and Rex. Charles Crawford was Rex. Look, look at that. How many people are out? And uh, the queen was Adelaide Wisdom, Benjamin. And there, there uh, is Rex Charles Crawford toasting his queen at the Boston Club. And of course, uh, Mrs. Benjamin is very much, has been a longtime philanthropist, a very dear lady, and she is still active and with us. And uh, the theme was origins of the names of states. There you go. She was the one who saved the symphony at one time. She, absolutely. It was on the verge of bankruptcy. And a lot of these floats are, you know, connected, <laughs> of course, to states. And, uh, but there's something rather interesting about this particular um, the parade because some of the floats were recycled for a little later in the year, right, yes, Arthur? Yes, they were. The uh, <clears throat> sesquicentennial of the Louisiana Purchase celebrated uh, at Jackson Square in October. President Eisenhower came to town and they reran some of this parade. No throwing was allowed. And they actually had Rex and Comus on a float. However, it wasn't the real Rex and Combs. It was stand-ins, <laughs> but they rode together for the first time in history. And uh, from newspaper reports, it was kind of a dull parade. It was out of season, but they wanted to make Mardi Gras a part of the celebration. Cecil B. DeMills was here, 22 ambassadors from around the world. It was a really big deal, uh, and it all ended in front of the St. Louis Cathedral. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you ever saw the footage of Eisenhower after World War II ended, when Stalin had the big parade in Moscow. He lasted for four hours, and Eisenhower was invited, and he's yawning <laughs> and, try, and trying to hide the yawn. So he, so he had a lot of experience at, at being bored at parades. <laughs> <laughs> and um, next up, we're going to look at oh, oh, look at that. I know, the crowds are amazing. Huh? Okay. I, I can't get over that in the neutral ground. Next up, we're so excited because this is actually footage of a national, an NBC broadcast that was filmed uh, uh, from the balcony at 520 Royal, WDSU, and Mel Levitt, who was, of course, a longtime star of Channel 6, WDSU, and some national commentators, uh, Cleveland Amory, uh, was also part of that, and Meryl Mueller, and they are, are going to tell us about the Comus Parade. Let's take a listen. Join the revelry from the balcony of station WDSU and Mel Levitt. Thank you very much, Meryl Muller. Hello, everyone, across the nation. This is the final glittering pageantry that winds up Mardi Gras for 1954. Before you, you see a sight that you'd see nowhere, I don't believe, in the United States or the world. These are what are known as the flambeau carriers. A flaming, torch-lit parade at night, deep in the heart of the View Carré. We're standing on the balcony of the Brulatour Courtyard Mansion, which houses WDSU in New Orleans. To our backs is the Mississippi River. Not far from here, the Natchez and Robert E. Lee staged their famous race. Down to the right, of course, is St. Louis Cathedral, a historic landmark, just around the corner, Antoine's famous restaurant. Right there on your screen, this is Comus. And his name is Secret. That's where they have their fun down here. They won't tell anybody who Comus is, although about 100 businessmen really know and won't let us tell you. Comus, great ruler of night, Carno. Comus, equal to Rex in splendor and grandeur as he comes down behind that Ford tractor on Royal Street in the Vieux Carré. The title float of Comus. And tonight, Comus has decided to come out in the streets of New Orleans with a garland of flowers. The garland of Comus. All these colors, I wish you could see them, they're just fantastic. All these colors are gold, purple, and green. The official colors of the Rex Carnival and the official colors of Carnival here in Mardi Gras. They are also the official colors of the crew of Rex. An Air Force band comes down the street, and an Air Force drill unit. There they are, right in the bottom of your screen. This is float number three, the peach blossoms. In a park where the peach blossoms blew, by Lang is the quotation. That was a very beautiful float. Now we're coming up to float number four. Float number four is magnolia. The white magnolia blossoms star the twilight. That is from Whittier. There goes Magnolia float out, and now we're coming up to float number 
by the zinnias in Zealand where the zinnias dwell. That quotation is anonymous. Anonymous is my favorite author. There he goes. Right behind the float, as you see there in your picture, are a number of the flambeaux, as they call them down here in New Orleans, the French word, a torch. These are kerosene lanterns carried by about 400 different people in the parade. And they're lit at the beginning of the parade, and they, you'll see the little tank at the top, which keeps them burning. See that fellow on the right-hand side of that tractor? He's got a flambeau there. It's got four or five lights on it, but just above it's the little tank that keeps it going. This is daisies. Myriads of daisies have shown forth in flower by Wordsworth. This is one of the most beautiful floats in the entire Comus Palais. This is roses. Each morn, a thousand roses by Omar Khayyam. This float is in third dimension, and you can feel it on your screen there as it passes in review. And now, coming into view, float number seven, Roses. And Comus here is vying, I believe, with Omar Khayyam and carrying through his theme of coupling poetry with visual presentation tonight. The quote from Omar Khayyam, I sometimes think that ever blooms, so red the rose is where some buried Caesar died on fled. Now Dogwood is just passed in front of your screen. That was float number eight, another favorite of the Southland. And following it, the sunflower, float number nine. That's the sunflower in the middle of your picture. Here the picture is governed by another quotation, that of Moore's, as the sunflower turns to her god when he sets. And here you have the sunflower turning its face up toward the sun. No need to remind you folks in Kansas that it is the state flower, the state flower of Kansas, and a very beautiful display here, all in gold and white. The parade is paused momentarily of course, this is nothing, this delay to uh, the pauses and delays in past days when there was no mechanized equipment. On the contrary, mules drew the parade, and mules, of course, being somewhat balky animals, would decide suddenly to stage a sit-down strike. When they did, the parade was at a pause, and quite often it took 30, 45 minutes to get the critters started again. Well, we've become mechanized, and that, of course, helps out quite a bit because the ball, the Comus ball, depended on just how quickly they could get the parade down to the auditorium. And now we're going to show you the most incredibly rare footage, but you actually have color footage of what a part of what you've just seen. And Errol, of course, we should point out that Comus is how it all began in the, in the 1850s. Correct? 1857, Comus began the style of parade that we have today. It began the <coughs> continuing carnival tradition and it created the word crew and um, I mean, Comus is really the father of all of the carnival as it involved, and that's the classic Comus costume with that, with that, with, with that mask and the, the, the costume. Yeah, we're seeing the same floats that we saw in the French Quarter at Gary Hall now, but yes. there's nothing like parading in the French Quarter. The charm of it all. Don't know if you noticed, but all of the flambeaux were the four burner kinds, which they no longer have. And I remember marching in parades in high school in the 50s, and. This was film that was shot that had to be developed and then shown at 10 o'clock after the 10 o'clock news. So we would get in a bus, go home to see ourselves on TV that <laughs> night. Uh, it was quite a tradition. That that went on until the 70s that Channel 6 broadcast from their, their balcony. I remember it well at, at 10.30. Yeah, be at that's 10:30. right. Yeah. And Arthur, if, having marched, you marched through the quarter, what was the reverberation oh, like? It was, it was uh, just, like on Royal Street? It being was so charming. Narrow. It was just so wonderful, it, it was so intimate. You were so close to everybody. And the crowds were friendly, and uh, it was just a special time, and we thought it would last forever, but 1972 was the last time the parades went through the quarter. And, of course, um, sadly, uh, Comus no longer parades. No parades. Parade. Well, what happened? You were getting the super crews by then. Like, like people started worried, what if Bacchus would break down in the quarter? And <laughs> finally the city said, no more parades in the quarter. That was a big loss. But what would happen, though, is they go up Royal Street to Orleans. Orleans, they'd take a left, and you go straight down to Orleans, that takes you to the back of the auditorium. And all of these uh, would have balls after the parade at the auditorium. And so it's really a, a convenient design, except for the people waiting in the auditorium, um, waiting for the parade to arrive. But it was really just a, a nice, it was a beautiful, beautiful sight. 
uh, to see the parade with the, the shadows and the vibration. Uh, just really nice. And we should point out that, sadly, Columbus no longer parades, having stopped parading in, in the early 1990s. Right, the ball still exists. Yes, of and, course. <laughs> and, and a couple of the floats still exist. They're not in very good shape. Uh, I think the King's float is one of them. Uh, but no, but what the ball does, and mm -hmm. to a certain extent, I think the, the, the spirit of it still exists. But mm -hmm. um, it was a loss. Um, I wanted to mention the announcer said that um, only about 150 businessmen know who Columbus is. I don't think that's correct. I think like maybe two businessmen know who it is. <laughs> uh, usually it's the captain uh, who selects uh, Columbus, and so he'd know, and Columbus would know. Uh -huh. And they also said nobody, know what, no, nobody knows what Columbus' name is. Mm -hmm. Columbus' name is Columbus. Columbus, that's right. <laughs> yeah. And he's a god. He's yeah, not yeah. a king. We he always have to point that's that correct. out. Uh, definitely. And now, though, we're moving over. We're still in 1954, but we're going to show you a little bit of Proteus that year. And this is uh, the vantage point is from Canal Street. Um, the um, wonderful, excuse me, this is Gallier Hall. And look at Proteus and, of yeah. course, the god of the, one of the gods of the sea. Yeah, let me say, uh, that's one of the classic king's floats. I love that float on sitting on the shell. And still today you see a Proteus parade and it's a, it's a replica of that. I mean, I, I, I really rank this as maybe like one of the, the top two King's floats. It's just beautiful. I agree. And, and you notice before him was the captain uh, in a white costume on a horse and that continues today. Yeah. Um, and the uh, theme, uh, I'll translate, it was Proteus through Please. the years. <laughs> and so um, some <laughs> wonderful uh, uh, floats um, hearkening uh, uh, previous parades, you know, like Charmaine from the 1883 parade and uh, the Wild Swans from an 1887 parade, but it was certainly for the history books here. Omar Khayyam. There was a captain for a long time in, in Proteus who had a real passion for the history of New Orleans, and he did a lot of parades with a historical theme, and he did a, um, one time he did a parade on the John Chase book about Frenchman Desire, uh, Good, Good Children. Yeah, it was, it was a great parade, but, but he really loved New Orleans history. Mm -hmm. And the, those, as they still do today, they wiggle, they shimmy, don't yeah. they, those floats? And next year, when we return back to normal, yes, um, hopefully. go and God see Proteus. Proteus is always on that Monday night, the night before Carnival. And I've always thought that Proteus, which is an old crew, and Orpheus, which is a relatively new crew, or two of the most beautiful parades at Carnival, back to back. I mean, if, if you want to forget about the beads and just if you want to really see something, really nice visual parades, that would be Look it. at the lieutenants here, yeah, too. It's the best double header in Carnival, I think, of Proteus, Orpheus. It really is. Look at that. And, um, you know, many of those were on, uh, what, cotton wagons. Uh, I know yep. Rex still uses some of those, but you can say, see the and way they sort of shimmy. Yeah, you can, see, you can see the waddle effect. Yes. Yeah. And this is one of my favorite things, because I have memories of this, that many of the stores uh, <coughs> would have the initials of, of some of the uh, organizations. So you see KOP yep. in this, in this uh, video. There's Kriegers and Imperial I know Labiches did that. Uh, Maison Blanche did, and so did, uh, I was about to say Dillard's. Forgive me. <laughs> D.H. Holmes. D. H. Holmes. <laughs> Uh -oh. There it is. Look at the K. Unfortunately, yeah. it's kind of cut off. It is KOP, <laughs> remembering that very well. But that's a wonderful color uh, footage of this. And we're going to be moving on, though, to Hermes, 1955, one year later. And this is from the Louisiana State Museum collection. And this is Hermes um, from Gallier Hall, the vantage point. The theme here, this is so exciting, Arthur. Prince Valiant, of course, based on the wonderful comic strip. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, they had to get permission from the author of Prince Valiant, uh, Hal Foster, to, to use these copyrighted images and uh, invited him down. And he actually came, was presented with flowers at the ball, uh, took some pictures on the King's float. It was a really, really big deal. And uh, the queen that year was Dawn Abair, who was the daughter of Congressman F. Edward Abair, who named Hermes back in 1939, uh, uh, 37, excuse me. And the king, and I guess we can say it now, it's supposed to be secret, was Harry Batt ah, from Pontchartrain Beach, yes. Okay. <laughs> he was the, the father, yes, who helped start, um, of course, Pontchartrain Beach. Wonderful man. Uh, the grandfather, I should say, of Brian Batt. There you go, and Jay Batt. <laughs> and and Jay uh, Batt. these floats were by the Dutchman brothers and had a very distinctive look to them. And it's really a pretty parade. And, and look, it, look at the sparklers that they carry. Yeah. You don't see that much anymore. With no, the you're right. Mm -hmm. And Herbie. very true to the theme, you know, every float illustrated a chapter in the, the and history pastel of uh, colors, huh? Prince Valiant. And Hermes has always been one of the beautiful parades, too. It parades on the, the Friday before Mardi Gras. Pioneer did a lot with lighting. It was one of the early things 
um, with lighting, and it's, it's always been known to be a very efficient parade, too. Absolutely, and we're moving on to Venus. 1952, it'd be great to see Venus sadly no longer exists. And it, right up here, toasting with the mayor, and hearts drawn, which is very interesting, yep. here we go. And it first paraded in 1941, it yep. ended in 1992, and it was on the Sunday afternoon prior to Mardi Gras, look at that. With, and look at, there's Chep Morrison, and huh? And the, the queen is actually, would become Miss Irma Strode, who uh, became the captain of Iris that year and was captain for about 40 years, uh, was responsible for their first parade in 1959. So there was a Venus connection. Should mention too that Venus used a, used a Babylon floats for a long time, then had an arrangement with Okeanos. But these floats are the same floats that would have been in the Babylon parade. That year. We, should, we should mention, if nobody's caught it yet, it was an all women's parade. Oh yes, yes. Thank you. Was, yeah. very good the, the, point. Yeah. Okay, and Annette Mason was very involved for many years too. Right, we, Alan's we, mom. Yes, Alan, indeed. Alan's Mason's mom. I know Irma Stroud. Uh, I don't know if she did it the whole time, but at least in the last few years, she put a lot of work and a lot of effort in that parade. The day after the parade, Las Vegas. <laughs> Do you ready for that, huh? She had another kind of spectacle right. after that. There you and go. we have to mention, of course, Iris, which still exists and was yes. created as a ball crew in 1917, but didn't start parading until 1959. And we now also have muses yeah. and, and, and many other crews as well. Iris is now the largest female parade with over really? 3,000 members, so uh -huh. the women have taken over. <laughs> Absolutely. And next up, we're going to back up a little bit because yeah. we're going to start talking about Blaine Kern, who sadly was so much part of part of Carnival. And we, and we lost him in the recent past. But this is ALA. This is a West Bank Parade, yep. 1939. Stands right? for Algiers, Louisiana. Uh, uh, Al, uh, historian Al Robichaux has done a fabulous book on the history of this crew, and I uh, looked up some information about it. And one of the most interesting things to me was that it was 75 degrees that day, if you can believe that. Yes. And it first rolled in 1933, and the king this year, though, was uh, Dr. Henry LaRocca. Right. Wasn't he? Who was very influential in Blaine Kern's uh, career, he actually gave him a job painting a mural. Uh, and was so impressed with his work. That he, he was the cruise captain, the rocket. Crew captain point. and a uh -huh. prominent physician. And uh, that's really how Blaine got his start. Is his father had, had, had was doing some sign painting, but but uh, Blaine really became the the Mardi Gras force for you know how many years? Several decades. Yeah. And you're right. He certainly will be missed, but. Uh, his legacy lives on, and, and, and eventually, be started. eventually became captain of Valor. Yes, he did. Human, so yep. he was captain for a long time. And we are going to fast forward here because we're going to Rex 1955, and uh, and this is one of those parades where Blaine Kern. Um, was certainly involved. And the king that year, Rex, of course, is Darwin Fenner, who is a major figure in the 20th century of Rex and Carnival, right? Yeah, we were talking earlier about the importance of the Fenner family. We saw his father earlier as Rex. Uh -huh. This is Darwin Fenner, the year he was king. He would Harriet also, Smither was queen. Uh -huh. uh, he would also become captain of Rex for many, many years. And he is considered to this day like one of the really great and innovative captains. And one thing he did is he hired Blaine Kern who I think was like 29 at the time, and sent him to Italy, to Via Reggio, sent him to Spain also, to study some of the float building <laughs> techniques there. And you can see some of the, the Via Reggio influences on some of the floats as they would evolve with the moving parts and the, the moving heads. It had a big influence. And he also had a lot of other uh, innovations of, of floats, like the, His Majesty's bandwagon and, and other things. But he was, he was an important figure. Absolutely, and we're going to move on to 1959, Rex. And once again, you can clearly see the influence of Blaine Kern. I love these walking figures. I wish we still had those. Uh, too, those came from Vio Reggio. Oh. Uh, and uh, this is where you really see, I believe this is the second parade that was animated, but the animation in this parade is phenomenal. And Rex and is Richard West Freeman, we should say, <laughs> and the Freemans have long been involved, of course, with Rex, the uh, two future Rexes. He was the father of two future Rexes, and also also a future queen, Tina Freeman in 1971. And that's the classic Rex float, King's float look uh, right there with, yes. the, with, that, with that crown. You still see that. And his queen the... is Flora Sanders uh, Fenner, of course, French, and who's, once again, a uh, family's been so involved with Mardi Gras, of course, with Darwin Fenner. And, and, here's, and, here's and look at the Buff Gras. Buff Gras. We've seen several versions of him um, <laughs> through the years, but it goes back to the very early parades with the, the buff crowd represented the fatted calf, Mardi Gras, the last day of feasting, 
before and this fast. Was the first year it returned too. Yes, it, it was, was live great. up until 1901. They had a real, uh, <laughs> and actually, Buff Grant, there's one in the 1867 Comus Parade. So it's an ancient symbol of carnival, but Can Wayne brought me, it back. This to me is classic Via Reggio, right there. <clears throat> that kind of figure, that kind of look, the way the head is moving around. And aren't uh, they animated by little people inside? Uh, I, they probably were then, not anymore. <laughs> it's my, my machinery. <laughs> well, look at the look at the, the lion. So, so the some crowd. of the props are from Via Reggio, and some then would be created. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You know, in those sort of transitional years. Isn't that an incredible figure? Right. Though? It really is. And some of these floats actually were, gonna, were led for a parade in Havana uh, in May 1959. What a story. And that, story, that right? happened several times in Rex's history where parades were either rent, rented or sold to other cities. That's mm -hmm. also another classic look right there. Via Reggio, yeah. Yeah, I think that was probably a, like a triangular trade that developed. And, uh, and actually, the Via Reggio parade is younger than the Rex parade. I think it started like a couple of years after Rex did. Hmm. And for all we know, it may have been influenced by Rex. Maybe. Because it may have heard about what was going on. This was at a time, you know, when Rex started and a lot of these other parades, you know what else was happening? Railroads. That railroads were developing all around the world, especially the United States. And railroads wanted to have things that would get people traveling. And so you started seeing a lot more carnivals being created around the same time that, uh, uh, that Rex was created. Yeah. Yeah. I have uh, 1873 a railroad brochure in my collection promoting Carnival. Wow, right. yeah. perfect. And we're moving on to Rex 1960. And um, that is another example of um, Blaine Kern being so involved. I love the open to this. And the queen was Stella Evans Farwell, and she's awaiting, of course, the parade at the Boston Club, which, and look at, look at the Rex, the Blaine Kern truck, the And that's Blaine in the middle, truck. throwing right now with the hat on, that's Blaine. Oh, really? Yes, it look is. at that. I'm sure it is. Oh. And if you look real carefully, you'll see some doubloons coming off the floats. It's, oh, wow. This That's is, right, 1960. The first year that any doubloon was thrown, uh, H. Alvin Sharp convinced oh, the captain of Rex right. this was going to be a neat throw, and man, he was right. And some more walking figures, which is uh, would be my favorite. Rex this year was Gerald Andrus, and the theme was the wonderful world of let's pretend. Look, at I wish these walking figures could be reinstated. How clever Yeah, you know, the story is that day, some of the authorities at Gallia and Hall wait. Uh -huh. Some of the authorities at Gallia Hall waiting for the Rex Parade, got calls from the police down the line saying the crowd was going crazy because people in the Rex Parade were throwing money <laughs> and, the, and the crowds were, were diving for, more, um, for the money. They didn't know that these were the balloons yet. Yeah, but that was Gerald the first Andrews, day of the balloons. You said, yeah, look at that. And there's that Boeuf Gras. In, in a different fashion, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna still see another version yet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. One with a, one with, there he is again. And there, there's that guy again. Yeah. He was part of the title float, I guess, annually as well. And look at that, look how animated that was too, with the um, alligator, it's wonderful. And look at the throws. Oh, so these are beads, no doubt, probably at that point then from Czechoslovakia. Uh, absolutely, sure they and were. And maybe some from Japan, but definitely Czechoslovakia. Yeah. I love that phase too. And we don't see, a, unfortunately, we don't see a jester in, in this parade footage, but the jester is also one of those iconic floats. Yes, it is. I know some nice people who ride that float. You do? <laughs> absolutely. I love that. And yeah, all that is being, um, oh, uh, look at this guy. It's magnificent, huh? Yeah, and, uh, and all that movement is being done by somebody inside the float. And this notice, is... too, no barricades. No barricades. Yeah, that's right. No barricades either. And uh, I'm real excited because we're about to go to Rex 1968 and actually has sound. Ooh. So we might um, sort of, here we go, sort of hush in between here. But uh, Rex was Ernest Villery whose family, of course, has been in New Orleans since almost the very beginning. And his queen was Delia Lane Hardy. And this year, the Buff Cry has a new look. Look at that. And the special guests uh, of the Rex Parade were Herb Albert and the Tijuana Brass. The theme was New Orleans, we love you. Love the everybody dressed as bakers. And there's that little baker figure at the, at, in the, at the yeah. back of the float. And huh? that's still part of the Buff Gras float. What is different, though, is that, that, that this Buff Gras is uh, different colors. Look at the brown and white. Mm -hmm. There's Herb Albert. Look at that. In the parade itself. Wow. And uh, the wonderful Rex lieutenants, their purple, green, and gold. Ursuline nuns, tribute. 
New Orleans, we love you, to coincide with the 250th anniversary of the founding of New Orleans in 1968. So there we go, the celebration there, the cabildo. And the costumes really match the floats. In the earlier years, people had just random mm -hmm. costumes on, but not now. And of course, 1718 being the founding year. And there's, uh, that is actually the debut of the streetcar named Desire. Yep. And look Flip. who's playing trumpet. Sharky Banana! That's him. All right. From Bourbon Street. Sharky. <laughs> great. The Rex Transit Company, huh? <laughs> oh, love that. That was yeah. a great theme, too, years later. <clears throat> and the freaky, look at that, the French opera, <laughs> the freaky opera, the French opera. And of course, the French Opera House was nearby and it burnt down in 1919. And that's where a lot of carnival balls were held. Look uh, at the Grand Duke Alexis here, eh? There he is. Looks just like our, him. Our royal visitor for the first <laughs> uh, parade in 1872. <laughs> looks like him, right? <laughs> he looks like another Via Reggio character. That Could be. Yeah, look at the size of that prop, it. too. Yeah. All right, oh, very wonderful. good. And now we're going to move over to, once again, 1968, but it's Zulu. Let's take a look at this. And we have the incredible photographer, Jules Kahn, of the historic New Orleans collection is now has the Kahn's holdings, but this wonderful footage of uh, Jules, of course, chronicled not only Mardi Gras, but the jazz scene in New Orleans for so many years. And the jazz culture, of course, with jazz funerals, second lines, and, uh, and lots of and music. And, and look at, of course, Zulu. William Boykins was king. Uh, and again, he was also king in 1952 yeah. and 57. And Bertha LaRue was the queen. But uh, once again, still kind of a neighborhood parade and um, on, on a very circuitous route and, um, and, and very beloved by both the black and white community. No I mean, in that. terms of the audience, very interesting they, in the neighborhood. But in its early days, it pretty much stayed in, in those neighborhoods. And then the other mm -hmm. part of just followed the third following the traditional route where and actually more people can see it once it was doing St. Charles the Canal. But yeah, you can just tell how much like neighborhood spirit it was. And also the Mardi Gras Indians. And one of the dignitaries. Yeah. Uh -huh. The Mardi Gras Indians were doing pretty much the same thing in the same area. So the combination of the two was just really overwhelming. Yes. And they they appeared on Canal Street earlier, but it wasn't until nineteen sixty nine they actually had a permit to Parade on Canal Street. Really? And I'm, I'm so glad now we know where they're going to be so everybody can enjoy Yes, it. absolutely. And we're moving on to 1969, Rex with sound. And uh, you can actually hear a little bit of Ever I Cease to Love and the toast, which we will hush up so we can all hear. Creevy Clay at the Boston Club. Ms. Clay, Ms. Clay. You can hear if ever I to love. A little bit of it. <laughs> and the theme was Genesis through Gemini. Remember the Gemini space program, so that's why these guys are dressed as astro <laughs> early astronauts. <laughs> Clever theme, huh? <laughs> and St. Aug, uh, the St. Augustine High School Band is actually marching in this parade. That was their third year. It was History was made in 67 when uh, the Rex organization invited the first African-American high school band in New Orleans to parade with them. And uh, been with them ever since. Not every year. So they, they alternate with, with Zulu, but a welcome uh, component of the Rex parade. And once again, some animation there. The evolution of man. <laughs> that's uh, that's uh, not exactly the Bacchusaurus, though, is it? <laughs> no, no. Look at that, once again, the lieutenants. And here comes St. Og. Let's here take a go. listen. March of 100. Two 
biggest crowd pleases of the uh, St. Log Band and the LSU Band. And oh, you're a right. bit of the Saints here. We're here. We don't get to LSU too often. By uh, the way, 60 Minutes is in town doing a feature on the St. Log Band this year. Mm, mm. The glory that was Greece. Here we go. And there's, there's another shot of Sharky. Yep. Look at Sharky. That's a really good close-up shot, too. What an entertainer he was. Oh, absolutely. Look at that streetcar. Streetcar name design. A real tradition that continues um, to the present. Another one of those wonderful heads. And this is the Doughboy. Another signature current was sort of the rolling wheel at the, at the yeah. back of the flood. You'd see that Neat. many times, too. What a beautiful day it was, too. And God chose would always have the year. Yeah. Love that. Love that. Here we go. Woohoo! Oh. Whoa! We've got Meyer in the background there. <laughs> Gold rings and Chandler's shoes. Ain't there no more, huh, Pat? <laughs> That's Genesis to Gemini. It's quite a mix. <laughs> yeah, that man in the moon. It's a man in the moon figure. <laughs> and this is, by the way, this year was the uh, uh, first appearance of the Royal Calliope, which was a brand new signature, which eventually would become a, uh, a new feature, which eventually would become a signature flow. There you go. His Majesty pretty, Royal Calliope. That's Calliope. changed a bit since then, but that's yeah. where it started. <laughs> Oh, wow. The Royal Calliope, right? Yeah, absolutely. And now <laughs> we are moving on. Speaking of 1969, Bacchus, the first year of Bacchus. And Bacchus, Bacchus had its rendezvous. That's what they call their ball right. or supper dance in the Rivergate. E, explain what the Rivergate was for the those Rivergate who don't recall. The Rivergate was the first attempt at the major convention center. It was it existed. Where the casino, uh, the, where the Harris is, uh, with yeah. Harris, whatever the names would be changed to. Uh -huh. but anyway, it took up that entire block. At the time, it was seen as being a very modern building. But when they built it, when they were making the plans, they they made sure that they had entrance doors, like freight entrance doors, that were large enough for big floats to go through. So people were thinking about adding something new to Mardi Gras at that time. And in fact, it was people within the tourism industry, especially the Brennan family, that really pioneered developing Bacchus as, as, as really kind of a, a tourist attraction for that Sunday night before Mardi Gras. But the plan was, instead of getting away from the society ball and having this huge party in a building that had never been done before. And, and, and so the Rivergate became first. Eventually, the Rivergate was, re was replaced by the convention center. And then uh, Dimon uses the Superdome. But that was the beginning of it. And the theme was the best things in life, if it seems a little eclectic there. And, uh, and of course, the, the other thing is there's no king. There yep. is a Bacchus yep. who we'll see shortly. The celebrity was Danny Kay. Indeed. And I believe the Harry James Orchestra provided the music really? at the ball. Uh, Blaine Kern used to tell the story that he brought Ed Muniz, the captain of Endymion, to see this. And uh, Ed said, you know what, this is a future Mardi Gras in 1974. And Demian went to the River Gate. So there's uh, Danny Kay. There's Danny Kay. Yeah. What a what a great entertainer. So Mega, go ahead. One of his famous movies was Hans Christian Andersen going back to our Nordic fairy tales. <laughs> to yeah. Fairy tale. this, so. Exactly. And look at that wonderful vaulted ceiling that was yeah. a, a Curtis and Davis design. And, and you know, there's a story about yeah. him that he uh, he was very willing and, and very friendly. But we got on the flood. It was very very cold that night. And so he, he, he complained, can you get me anything to get me warm? And so they rigged up a little electric heater. This one's still in the den. So he's sitting down, he's all tucked in with the heater. The float goes out, it turns out into the street. He sees the crowd, he stands up, starts waving to the crowd, never sits down again the entire night. <laughs> and so the little heater was just aimed at, his, at an empty throne and he was just waving all night. And now we're moving on to 1967. We're gonna back up a little yep. bit because this is really rare. It's the first Endymion Parade. So at this point though, Arthur, the parade is more just a sort of, a, a, a sort of moderately, you know, medium size parade in Gentilly, correct? Yes, and I actually saw that parade. That oh, and look parade. Who, let's, let's say that's, who this is. That's Ed Muniz, captain, the longest running captain ever, still is with us and still captain of Endymion. 
And it was a it was a fun parade. They rented Carrollton floats that have been 140 members. He very wisely had all the sportscasters in town. It was a sports theme uh, ride in the parade, so he got extra publicity. That's Harry Rosenthal, who's the king, who was king of 17 parades and balls in his life. Yeah. Uh, his wife was a queen. Uh, the parade was very average. Uh, I saw it on Duce and. Trafalgar, Trafalgar, near the fairgrounds where it started. It was in Gentilly for several years, but uh, no one knew what the, Ed didn't know what this was going to become. But it became one of the most successful organizations in history. Well, that parade was too small for Ed Munez's ambition. Yep. And, and once he saw Bacchus, he said, "This is the way to go." Yeah, that's right. And uh, and he created actually something bigger than Bacchus. I mean, it, it uh, you know became the biggest parade in terms of, of ridership. And uh, look at that. I mean, it really is rare. It is it's so rare, but we're so lucky to, to have it as well. And the theme that year was actually Take Me Out to the Ball Game. That's why we saw the Astrodome yep, earlier. Yep. <laughs> which it's, is great. And the final float saluted uh, the New Orleans Saints, which hadn't even played a game yet. We had the <laughs> franchise, but uh, this is February. Football started in preseason in August. And he got the name in Dimion because the, uh, the parade being in Gentilly the fairgrounds was nearby, and he saw a horse that ran there whose name was Endymion, mm -hmm. and he kind of liked that name. So, so Endymion was named after a horse that ran at the fairgrounds. <laughs> <laughs> and we are actually going to back up a bit because we've got um, some very, very rare footage. I mean, this is, this is quite a show of rare footage, too. Yeah. But we've got um, Zulu. We're going to show you Zulu of 1954, and this is on Rampart Street. This is on South Rampart Street. And, you know, um, once again, pointing out these wonderful aluminum smaller floats. This yep. is way back when, uh, kind of the size of maybe a crew de yep. float these days. A lot of but tin look foil. at the made of tin foil. Yep. And, though, uh, you know, sometimes those parades lasted for six or seven hours. Yeah. So some of that was a little on the precarious side. And, and actually, um, when. Um, when Louis Armstrong was king of the Zulus in 49, everybody wanted a piece of his float, so he eventually <laughs> fell apart. So he had to, they had to take him off the float. But look at this, this the American drugstore, that is at Rampart and Canal Street, I believe. Yep. And I believe Nat King was the um, king that year. And, and, well, here we go. This, yeah. this, Nat King, I believe, was Old Crow, and he was the right. ambassador for, and this is wonderful, for um, the, old, what, the Old Crow liquor, Look, of course, exactly. whiskey, and who supported, they um, helped out with Zulu from time to time as well. And look at this. Yep. Mardi Gras Indians, 54. Fabulous. And this is probably an original, not an original, but a good example of a second line. And look right at the there. Southern Railway Station, wow. of course, yeah. and sadly, which is where Simon Boulevard Plaza is. But I just love this, these homespun costumes. A bride, can you believe <laughs> <laughs> Some of these What guys. fun, huh? Oh, all, yeah, all kind of homemade. The Moss Man, the Moss Man. <laughs> the Moss Man was a recurring guy. He came several years. There was a Moss Man out there. Yeah, yeah look at the oh, Southern Railway. I cannot footage. believe that that station is not still oh, no. up, or at least yeah. the facade in there was, of course, Christ. And Betty Finnan was the royal, not the, I should say royal, the official decorator for the city of New Orleans. And notice those poles. Did a that was her job. signature, those she poles over the years, too. And look at the crowds. Look huh? at the crowds. Incredible. And of course, that was before Suburban Parade. And and also, the city was more compact at the time sure. in yeah. terms of, of, of housing patterns. And, things. and next up, we're going to show you a little bit of Mid-City on Canal Street, of course, which used to wind its way through Mid-City, the neighborhood. And it first rolled in 1934, but this is fabulous. And this is the um, first we see the 1956 parade, and then we see later the 1962. But this, this is magic. This it, is it, it really magic. distinguished itself. Go ahead. It, it distinguished itself, and it still does in two ways. One is the use of foil. It's always been just a great parade. We would really call foil. And let's it, go to the beach was the theme. Look at this. It, okay, and the other is the use of automation in this. It's always yeah. had moving parts to it. Yeah. And this was the pioneer of using Boy Scouts in terms of Boy Scout power inside. Inside uh, the yeah. Boy Scout power. Okay. I love the eyes. But, but that's classic. You can see obvious yeah. foil right there, but, and then you see the moving parts. And you don't see the Boy Scouts underneath the float, yeah. some of them on <laughs> bicycles turning the wheels. Isn't and that neat? Look at the ball. It's, it's so clever and all foil. And uh, didn't, I believe, it was it Betty Kern, Blaine Kern's uh, sister? Betty, yeah. Betty Ray had a lot Excuse to do me, with Betty that Ray. in later years. Yes, yeah. yes. But Betty it was Ray. always a fun parade. This of course, they did so the greatest bands in Dixie's for a long time. 
uh, a very popular band contest, yeah. but a great parade. And moving on to Toth. And Toth, of course, this is from the 1950s. This is 1951 yeah. on Magazine Street, which, you know, to the present, except for this year, of course. Um, but um, Toth um, on Magazine and then later on to St. Charles. But Look Toth, at that. Toth was always famous for its circuitous route because it liked to pass by various institutions uptown. Like nursing homes. Nursing homes, that yeah. sort of thing. And so it had a route kind of like none other. And it was allowed to go at places where other parades couldn't go. Like, you know, like you didn't see parades on Magazine Street. And, uh, and still to this day, that's the element of that in Toth. But it's a parade that's really, uh, it's stuck in there and it's grown. I mean, it's really a big parade now. It, it is. was one of the important parades in Cornwall. It's kind of the last neighborhood parade. Yeah. You miss the Mid-City and Mid-City and Carrollton and Carrollton and Alala, you know, across the river. But a great, great parade. And they do a lot of philanthropic things, as many crews do now. This has been so much fun. <laughs> Just taking a look at how can we do it again? Carnival Let's get some more has films. Evolved. <laughs> so much fun. Yes, Pegasus. Remember, Pegasus is oh. also in Mid City too. Yes, indeed. Yeah, yeah. we've lost some big ones, but yeah, uh, I have. bet there's more footage out there that people have and say, "I wonder if they'd like this." Yes, hey, yes, yes, would like yes. It. The answer is yes. <laughs> and once again, special thanks to the Historic New Orleans Collection because a lot of the footage uh, came from there. Thank you all, and, yeah. and we certainly hope that you have enjoyed. Of course, look looking back at some New Orleans parades, and uh, it's great to see the parades of the past. And may Carnival's future be just as colorful and creative. We leave you now with one more parade from the past. Wait, first, let me say, okay. I, I just heard that uh, Babylon is at Jackson Avenue. <laughs> so if you just wait a little bit longer, it'll be coming. <laughs> That's right. This is the 1954 Rex Parade okay, with the theme, Nature Creates, Man Invents. Thank you so much for watching and happy Mardi Gras.